Can he stand tall again? The College Cup final is underway. Clemson against Washington. Daniel Radford is our center official. He was the fourth official during the semifinals on Friday night, and now he will have command of this game here on Sunday. Alvaro Gomez. Missed kick back to Oscar Ogren. The best center backs in the country. Isaiah Reed trying to chase it down off his line. Sam Fowler with a fumble. Wide open goal. Are you kidding me? 26 seconds in. Reed likes the lap. And the Tigers are up 1-0. And a critical error by the sophomore Sam Fowler. An all-league player swings and misses. And Reed capitalizes. This team has had to change as the year has gone on, and they've removed their number nines. They don't have a true striker, but they've recreated in the aggregate. Their leading scorer is a midfielder coming in. It was Pipe. He's got a little company up top now. Isaiah Reed in transition, gets lucky. It's a terrible mistake by Sam Fowler. One of the comments coming from Jamie Clark about Sam Fowler, he's so confident. He's a big game believer, but occasionally it can get him into trouble. It's done it inside a minute in the College Cup Final. Isaiah, Isaiah Reed scores his eighth goal of the campaign. That does now tie Pipe for the lead for the Tigers. Let's see how Fowler bounces back mentally and how his team bounces back emotionally after that mistake. What a start. We set an early goal and really changed things up. I don't think we saw that happening. Fastest goal in the ACC this season. And one thing to note, too, with Mike Noonan's clubs, when scoring first, his teams in 12 years of Clemson, 119, 8 and 8. And undefeated this season. That's the other thing. Out of here. 12 and 0 this season as well. They get out in front, they stay out in front. That's scary because they are known as a second half team. To, so to have a lead like that this early on, that can also mess with your psyche. When you're used to playing in a different fashion, you score that early. How do they continue to handle it out in front for this extended period of time? And Mike Noonan, he actually changed, folks. He had the beautiful orange pants on before. I don't know if he got superstitious. I don't know what happened, but he went with some khakis, and his boys started at the start of the game with an amazing goal. And as we said, that record they have that he has is stout, to say the least. And the crowd here is definitely alive in that Clemson orange right now. Boxes out Dylan Tevez and draws the foul. Those are two Matt Herman semifinals. That is the National Player of the Year award. 15 semifinalists named last week, and that's two of them on the offensive and defensive side of things. And there is Sam Fowler, the sophomore. He is an all Pac 12 performer, second team this past season. Honorable mention in his rookie campaign. You made a critical mistake. How hard is that to bounce back? You were center back. When you make critical errors in that part of the field, you can cost your team. How hard is that to bounce back from? The good news is, is immediately you saw Ryan Saylor walk over to his goalkeeper. You know, they noticed that he's been rattled. And, you know, this early on in the game, Dallin, it's pretty much the only advantage that you have here because of the stakes and the fact that you have conceded in such dramatic fashion. But I do go back to my point that I made at the back end of the goal. He's still a big game player. Mm -hmm. You've made a mistake, that's fine. Everybody's gonna make a mistake. The true mark of a great player is the fact that you can still get better as the game goes on. You're gonna make mistakes throughout the game. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. Even if you play a great ball, it's not the best ball you could ever play. So how do you react now? Mm -hmm. I have no issue with what he's going to do on the field. Can he just maintain that sort of quality consistency we've seen over the course of this entire season after such a blunder? Callum Johnson sends it up there as Sailor, the captain in the Mac Herman semifinalist in the back line, number four battling. Something to watch. He went down with a shoulder injury in the semifinals. He is starting this game, but Jamie Clark said, not sure how much he can give them, but he's in the game. That's four and one. We'll see how he goes. All right, Devin, we, we, we talked about keys, and we're going to give you a branded download here. Uh, does it remain the same despite what we just saw in the first 30 seconds? 100%. Get on the ball, stay on the ball as much as possible. They were high 50s in terms of the possession battle against Notre Dame. They want to push the mid-60s, high 60s if they can against Washington. This team and the Huskies does not run very deep, and so if you can make them chase as much as possible, let the ball do the work, run them into the ground with this lead, and try and pick off a second.
and Jordan Morris actually in the 2015 final when they played Clemson, Clemson Jordan Morris, the star from Stanford, which is Jamie Clark's alma mater you're seeing there. He scored against Clemson in the second minute. Now Clemson has to flip the script here. <laughs> this year they've scored even faster. In less than 30 seconds they put up a goal. They were on the wrong end of that 4 nothing beating. Mm -hmm. What's in it? These Clemson teams, 15, 16, 17. Pretty impressive. Washington is 3-1-1 one, one this year, though, when their opponent scores first. So they have battled back and had success. Justin Malou striding forward. The senior skips it past Charlie Ostrom, but Saylor's there to clean it up. And Saylor puts it out for a point. Uncharacteristic plays from two of the best defenders in the country, with Fowler being the keeper and Saylor being the center guard early in this game. Watch that shoulder, too, because that's the side where if you're going to spin like that, your momentum is going to come up against the pain that you're dealing with if you're Ryan Saylor. So they got an injection before the game to help him out a little bit. But both your goalkeeper and captain on the back line. Pretty big mistakes inside five minutes. Mm -hmm. Luis Felipe Fernandez Salvador, then Colin Pipe to take the corner. He had the opening goal in their semifinal match. Out swinging ball, header. Malou got a piece of it. Excuse me, Hamidi Diop. Sophomore center back got a piece of it. And now what's uh, what is Devin's download here for the Huskies? Take the calculated risks and this early on you wouldn't expect that you might have to be a bit more on the front foot. But the Huskies are so good at sitting, watching rotation, absorb the pressure and then spring and go in the other direction. I've said to you multiple times this season that they are one of, if not the best, counter-attacking team in all of college soccer and that's going to have to ring true tonight. But it is their benefit oh, the way this team lines up. Johnson's first touch let him down. And Reed played a nice ball to him. Can he clip it back into the middle? He does. Sila was arriving, but a shield Robin, the center back, clears it out. Pipe brings it down. Radford blows the whistle. It's Pipe got a rocket off, but he called a little high boot. And with the amount of movement that you get, there is wide open spaces. Good little step up here on the far side by Charlie Ostrom. Just can't go that high if you're Pipe. Unless it's the strike that we saw in the semifinal game. It was an absolute rocket off the crossbar and he scored in the 11th minute against Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish did equalize in the 21st with a penalty spot in Jack Lynn and that went to penalties. In the end, Clemson prevailing just like they did in the quarterfinal round up against up in Corvallis in Oregon State, who was the number one overall seed, a team that Washington knows well. They lost to it's their only loss of the year, 18-1 and 2, was to the Beavers and one of the draws to the Beavers as well. One of those games they played with nine men, though, in the battle now. And obviously a big game brings out the heavy hitters. Jim Phillips, the ACC commissioner, George Klevkoff, the Pac-12 commissioner. Obviously both these men were integral in the alliance between the Pac-12, the Big Ten, and the ACC, and taking in the match here. On a beautiful day in Cary, North Carolina. What's that conversation about? Maybe that first goal by Isaiah Reed. You know, <laughs> maybe, maybe breaking down the CFP Final Four. And there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about college sports. What you really want to watch here right now, Dallin, is as the Huskies build from back to front. We'll talk about the transitional moments, but those risks that are going to be key. The space actually lines up. There's a tug. Scardina was on a dead run from the midfield. And you see Charlie Asensio. He's going to go into the book. One of the veterans in this team, Asensio, the senior. This is his 82nd cap for Clemson. Former All-League player. This worthy of a yellow here, professional file. The interesting thing for me is, is both semifinal games were pretty wide open. And what he's trying to do is come back across him. A lot of times as you jump over, your mind tells you you're going to be able to make that transition, but usually you get caught up. There's actually more of contact on the lower end between the feet as opposed to the outstretched arm. I've always said this to you, and it continues to ring true this afternoon. If you're going to call that now and give a card for something that is that tug, now it's transitional, possibly warranted, but if you're going to do it now, you're saying you're going to run a tight ship all day long. This team is deadly on set pieces, and that man, number four, Ryan Saylor. Jamie Clark told us before the game, you won't see him up top early in set pieces, but that was before they conceded a goal. They're worried about his shoulder, but he has six goals in the campaign, second on this team, all from free kick opportunities. They've scored 18 goals in the last 19 matches on set pieces. They are deadly here. Can they capitalize? Tevis fakes, 
Ostrom to put it in. Saylor was arriving and he goes down. First time he's hit the deck, he pops up okay. And Jamie Clark, as you mentioned, is the coach of the Huskies in his 11th season. He's been in the NCAA tournament nine times. This is their first appearance in the College Cup and their first opportunity to win a championship here. He was a great player in his own right, playing for his father, Bobby, at Stanford. He was an All-American back in the late 90s. Then he coached at Notre Dame along with Brian Weiss, who he beat in the semifinal, one of his close friends. And Bobby Clark, not in attendance, but obviously Coach Chad Riley, too, at Notre Dame. His fingerprints are all over this College Cup. The regularity at which the Huskies turn out quality seasons. It's really hard to put a value on what Clark brings to this program because at least 12 wins the last five seasons, three years in a row, the Elite Eight. Of course, this year progressing a little bit further, as we can tell, and you know, 10 out of the 11 seasons he's been in charge, 12 win seasons. Yeah. That's not fair in some conferences, <laughs> right? But he's doing it against the UCLA's, against the Stanford's, yeah. right? I mean, top-notch competition. Oregon State, of course, this season, a great year. Kendall Burks on the ball, all-league player. Over, hits the pass to Tevez. The issues they ran into a lot in that first game is they chased Way too much against Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Defensively, everybody looks at their goals and they should. But defensively, they can defend with the best of them. But they sat back. The defensive line was too deep, and they weren't able to provide themselves any sort of relief on the offensive side. Clark said, "We got to be better in that aspect." Yeah, we defended great, but we didn't give ourselves any chances to try and go be brave. Going down a goal early. I'm gonna step up now. Chase a little bit more. Stretch yourself a little bit further. But to that initial point, that benefits Clemson because mm -hmm. you've got to run more. Yep. You're not on the ball as much. Get more tired. Clemson had a nice spell of possession here. They had an opportunity to spring Justin Malou and switch their initial break of the pressure, but Alvaro Gomez chose not to. Malou, who's going to receive the ball now, the 27th overall pick in the Columbus crew, was not too happy about not getting the ball then. Can he run this one down? Sailor's over there to scoop it up. And no foul call there. Sailor advances it further. Huskies are great in transition, but crowded out quickly. Pipe brings it down, gets it to the feet of Usman Sila. He is dangerous running at defenders. Out to Pipe. Most of just takes it by him. Well taken down by Gomez, the junior from Spain. Over to Amel Diaz, sophomore from Senegal. To his countryman, Sila. Back to Quinn McNeil, a local product. South Carolina. Scardina is able to keep it in play, but Sila scoops it up. Pipe, clever back heel. Johnson and Malua arriving. Johnson's on it. He clips it in. Pipe gets head to it. Nothing on it. See Sila again going to the deck here. He's leaning on that left shoulder, too, the one that's bothering him, and right to it, springs up. No issues. Love the fact that Jamie Clark sent him high on the set-piece opportunity as well. That's not chasing the game, though. Just got an understanding. Okay, we need a presence. Yeah. Let him know that we're fine. So take a look at this young man's career. You saw there, he registered it twice. He's a super senior his sixth year. In his first four years, he played in 13 games. Last two years, he's been an all-league player. This year, he was the defensive player of the year in the conference in the Pac-12 and in Matt Herman semifinals. That is a young man developing year over year, never given up really, and his career was not going well at the beginning. <laughs> Sam Fowler hearing it, hearing it from the crowd. Gio Migaletti tangled up with Diop. Good recovery. Kalani Hosa Rienzi on the ball over to Ostrom. Switch out to Scardina. Ushered out by Asensio, who is on a yellow card. And Sailor's going to come forward again for the long throws. This is again, they will use these as a weapon as well. Any throw within about 25 yards. Of the goal line, they are trying to throw that into the box. Costa Rienzi will deliver. 
freshman from Berkeley, California. To Salem, gets the flick on, kind of. Broken up there by Christian Soto as Clemson was trying to transition out. Same page. Shield Robin, the senior. See that Bowling Green transfer, the other center back pairing with Ryan Saylor. Actually from the same club that uh, grew up in France. The same club of Valentin Noel, who was a Mac Herman finalist last year. Hit attacker. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> he was outstanding. Lights out, man. Pitt team got here to the College Cup, fell in the semifinals, though, to Indiana. Eventually fell to Marshall in the finals. sends it the overlap. Sila hits Asensio, flips it back. Reed is there! Reed's got two! A brace for the junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina! Repping the Tigers and giving him a 2 0 lead! Everybody just stopped as this ball came back across the 18. Beautiful movement once again by the Clemson Tigers in the lead up to this game, asking what the scouting report was like. Mike Noonan said, you know, they're kind of a mix. A little bit like Kentucky, a little bit of Denver, a little bit of everybody. And they're playing like it though, because they were brilliant in the first half against Kentucky. Similar movements, coverage at the right back spot, and the rotation is magnificent. The ball to the backside, he's about nine, 10 yards out. No marks, no one stepping. Time stands still for no man except Isaiah Reed in this first half. Brilliant header. You couldn't have placed it any better if you're Isaiah Reed. He now is the team leader for Clemson with nine goals on the campaign. And Mike Duna did tell us before, I actually had to ask yesterday if Reed was hurt. Because in the first game of this, of this College Cup, he didn't play that much as a starter. Played just over half the game. They went with Mohamed Say, who's an injured striker for them for most of the game, 40, 40 minutes. Most of the second half, I should say. And he said Reed just wasn't there. And Reed, Reed did not perform to his level, so he didn't get many minutes. Well, stepping up in this game. Well, I mentioned to you as well in the Georgetown matchup, and you, you get the same look because obviously it's the same team in Washington that there are really two areas of concern when you're lined up in a white jersey tonight and if you're sitting your flat four your two midfielders will come deep it's the space in front so that's when guys like a Cal Johnson and Luis Felipe Fernandez can get on the ball Luis Mancilla we've seen that already yeah. but then as the two midfielders come high this becomes this pocket in front of that back line that's where Reed took advantage of it this time around because the two midfielders come high they rotate back to the outside as this ball comes back across that gap never gets closed and so Reed just slides right into it nobody steps up into it which is the biggest thing for me how does not one player with everybody in the box go after what has to be the most dangerous man on the front line for this Tigers team? 2-0 is the deficit just inside of 15 minutes. Washington has not been down 2-0 all season. And there was a sub. Get to that in a second as the ball's played in. There is the sub, Lucas Meek, 33 white, challenging for the ball. He was scored the opening goal in their semifinal against Georgetown. One of the more talented attacking players. Reed goes down hard. He's rolling around. I don't want to see that. So that's Sela. And Daniel Radford has a little word with Nick Scardina. A lot of movement on that right side so far for the Clemson Tigers, hence the substitution and his counterpart, Scardina. Got to be more active here because the way that Clemson has been on the ball so far, they're pinning back on this left hand side. Charlie Asensio, very uncharacteristic, playing a higher line. A lot of times they'll send, and we talked about that, Justin Malou, they'll push him up. Oscar Agron slides over, they create this back three of sorts, and Asensio is really the upper study that just kind of sits on the left side of this back line and holds the shape. Instead, as they push him forward, it's forced both outside midfielders for the Huskies to sit deeper. They don't really have an outlet. Ball turned by Pipe and then he 
skips past me. Tevez is able to pick it up. And this is where the Huskies can be dangerous. These transitional moments. But, ooh, foul call there. And that's Gardino went down of his own volition. Quick restart. Tevez on it. He's got runners in the box. Back post. Just a little too tall for me. Sailor, the center back's going to track it down. He gets in the ball. Jill Robbie, their center back, is up high. Ipe plays it outside of his boot to Reed. Reed against Burks, 1v1. Reed's got two. Can he get a Hattie? Oh, he's taken down, no call. Reed's trying to get up. And then the call, actually called for handling it. You see Daniel Radford pointing to his hand, and Reed went down. You kids at home want to be a top-class defender? Watch Kendall Burks. This is a right back coming all the way over on the left-hand side in transition, just standing a really electric player up. Doesn't let his hips get crossed over when he cuts back. Little touch on the ball. Use that big frame. Don't let the speed play. The angles game really done to perfection by Kendall Burks. Kendall Burks is a second team All-Pac-12 performer this past season. Second team All-Pac-12 last year as well. Reed lays it off for Sela. Sela pulls it back out of some trouble. Crescencio. It's scary, by the way. If, if you're so used to playing on one side as a defender, and all of a sudden you're tracking against your weak side on that left shoulder, chasing the other direction. Now I'm left footer. Don't put it on my right side. <laughs> I'm, I'm not interested in that argument. It does a really good job. You go down 2 0, you're chasing again, you're thinking, wow, I make this mistake, it's three, and the game's over. It was perfect defending. Making the run through the middle, played by Robin. Well read by Otter. Blue on it. Bodies go down, play on. Sensio. They're playing. I was just the thinking the same thing. These boys thing. are playing, <laughs> I'm like telling they're, you. They're feeling it. About an hour and a half to kick. I'm talking to Dooney. So, you know, it's different for the guys. Their viewpoint is skewed differently than mine because they just want to win. Mm -hmm. And they don't care how they do it. Now, to be fair, when you get into a tournament, you don't always have to have you know, the best style and show off the, the best thing. Survive in advance. But, even said, you know, I, I want to win. I want to play the way that we're capable of and don't really feel like we've done that to the best of our ability recently. Okay, when's the last time you did it? You notice with his response, he didn't give a full game answer. Mm -hmm. So he's still waiting for that complete package. But he did reference, as we've talked about so far, that Kentucky game. Mm -hmm. They were on the ball a lot. Because of the lack of a number nine, he plays in more midfielders, that you'll see pop up in different locations. So you have a new Sila, who's on the right side. He'll drop down in, constantly challenging the shape of the team across from them. And that's exactly what's going on right now on the lead. They're not backing off. Meek floats it in, Marks comes and claims it. And Clemson beat Kentucky in their second game in the NCAA tournament, 2-1. 89th minute winner by Alvaro Gomez. They've had some heart I mean, some uh, heart pounding finishes in this tournament. 89th minute winner there, Oregon State. An 85th minute penalty drawn by Oscar Agra in the big center back and then capitalized on by Pipe. Put them into extra time where they won in penalties. Returned by Sila. Reed lays it off. Great pass by Pipe. Johnson, can he get there? Yes, he does. 1v1 with Ostrom. Help is coming. Reed, nice flip. Sila dancing through. Pipe lays it off. Persencio stings it. Not sure if it caught a body on the way through. Back to 
Ogren. Coming from the crowd as they are stringing passes together. Sensio looking for the critical one. Now Johnson arriving. How hard is this to defend against? This is probably the 20 something consecutive pass since you've had the ball. You're hearing it from the crowd. You're down 2 0. What is this like for us? The difficulty level isn't really the cause for concern. It's more of an annoyance. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is, especially when you're on the wrong end of a 2-0 scoreline down, as you chase so much, that once you get the ball back, you tend to make mistakes. You play balls that you shouldn't. So you chase for 15, 20 passes. There's 30-second intervals where you're not on the ball whatsoever. And when you do get it, you try and ping one into the corner, and it's not there. And they have nothing to show for it so far, even when they have gotten it back. And think about the, what's going on right there. 16 and a half shots is what their average is in a game. Six is what went on in that semifinal matchup against Georgetown. Now, the argument you could make is they were really efficient. Mm -hmm. Two out of the six end up in the back of the net. 30% of the time works every time. Mm -hmm. So that was good from them in the second half. But they're also not used to playing in this manner. You can't show any sort of showcase on the offensive side of the ball because they're chasing so much. It's got to be a conversation for your captains and your coach. Let's settle down. Let's get back to what we're great at. And let's go find some goals. Going to work in an anchorman reference. You blow, blow right by it. 30% of the time works every time. So there's bits of real panther in there. It makes it, it, makes it good. <laughs> a couple movie buffs floating around the, the production crew. 60% of the time. Showing a little love for them. All right, enough fun around here. Let's, let's do some business. Week 14, Monday Night Football matchup. It's a big one, NFC West. The Rams taking on the Cardinals. The Cardinals atop the NFC overall as well. The number one seed right now, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Also ABC, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Plus, and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Do you expect more subs coming in? Because we're about 25 minutes in here. These teams played, what, 36 hours ago. Recovery was a critical piece. Yesterday, Clemson, you're in ACC country here in Cary, North Carolina. They went down to NC State's facilities, helped get them recovered. They brought a masseuse from South Carolina. They always use, hold that shot. thought as Tevez should have played the ball, does not. Washington got some recovery in. They have a big squad. They played a little 11-11 to -11 for some guys that didn't get any minutes on Friday yesterday, but do you expect to see some more numbers in here? They have a big squad, but in terms of depth and the way that they use them, they don't rotate a lot of players no, 14, at all. 15. And yeah, it's 13, 14, 15 might be the max. A couple of those guys are defenders. Mm -hmm. So you're not used to seeing names coming off the bench to try and help out. Lucas Meek, they bring on early. Even though Rosales, he's just not there. And he wasn't there in the semifinal either, mm -hmm. outside of the game. And you know, Ryan Crowley is another one. They are two starters, though. That's the good thing that you have if you're Jamie Clark. Guy, guys used to being in the mix who just last season wore the shirt regularly in the 11. Tevez drives it in. Diop gets his head on it. Knocked out to Ostrom. Flag stays down. He's able to track it down. Ostrom floats it in. Got it out by McNeil. There's a Rienzi working against Johnson. Ostrom. Clear. George Marks not seeing much action. He did see big time action in the Notre Dame game. They made two huge saves in the overtime periods. Get it to penalties where he made another save in Penns to give them a 5 3 win in penalty kicks. He okay, forced the turnover. And plays down the channel. Okay. 
Anderson looking for Migretti in the channel and dead well by Ogden. Put it into the Tiger Faithful. Meek turns. Try to play the reverse pass. Meek stings it. Marks is there, man. First shot of the match for the Huskies. Diop plays into his countrymen. Two center points. Sophomores. Switch to Johnson. It is completed. He comes down with it. He's got Pipe. Still Pipe, and he's called for the foul. Oh. Christian Soto will add something extra to the senior from Ecuador, Pipe. He's trying to get the ball and play quickly here, but Pipe just in front of him. Back heel. Cheers. No card, no card there? No, marking his territory. Saying no and the way the game's gone, you wouldn't be surprised if he did show a card. Marking his territory. Okay. I feel like asking you that is just, it's, it's pointless. There's no, there's just zero shot as a former center back. And like, yeah, yeah, that should be a yellow. Ogden lays it back to Mark. Yeah, you know, I actually prefer to be a bit more wide open mm -hmm. and play more run and gun style, which we saw for the most part in, in its entirety within both semifinal games. Tevez flips it over, was looking for me. All right, Isaiah Reed's coming off. I'm sure he's going to have a big ovation. Just 27 seconds into the match. This is how we started, Devin. What a ball up over the top. Just challenge it. You know, let him chase onto it. Fowler takes his eye off the ball. Can't do that. Isaiah Reed can. Eighth goal in the season. Ties Luis Felipe Fernandez Salvador. Just watch the movement by Clemson. So good in transition. But with the ball at their feet. They don't go quick. They just play the numbers game. Dig to the back post. Excellent finish by the junior. Eighth and ninth goals of the campaign in the biggest game of his career. He's played in some big ones. They've been in the ACC championship two seasons ago. I should say last fall, last year. He was part of that team, starting lineup. The year before that, they were in critical game goal of the ACC championship as well. He played less minutes as a freshman. But to step up here in this environment with the College Cup on the line, it's been huge. Other issues that the Huskies are dealing with right now, and it's a tendency of theirs that has benefited them. Two outside midfielders, Lucas Meek and Nick Scardino, tend to play pretty narrow. Like to build the numbers on the inside and use it to their advantage, where they'll come off that back line and they'll have numbers to go quickly the other direction. 60-yard runs, 50-yard runs. The problem is, is when they're trying to distribute right now, Clemson has compacted the middle of the field. And so all of the midfielders that they have at their disposal, even on quick turnovers, are right back to the interior. So even when you play through the middle and look for a Scardita into feet or someone up top like a Tevez, you don't have that relief on the outside. So there's all this space on the exterior they're not stepping into. It's real easy for the Tigers to just sit here and say, okay, you're playing right into us. Mm -hmm. She just checked in the game for our people. Ball goes out. Quick and tight ball. The coverage of the NCAA championships continues with women's volleyball. The championship semifinal action begins Thursday, December 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA women's volleyball championship, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all nine NCAA championships. Just into the action is Elijah Paul, the freshman. Battling with Amini Diop, Alfred Husky's throw. Came in for Gio Migliotti. There's Paul. Gilbert, Arizona, working. Gets a cross off. Goes off the heels. Head. See what hooks it free over to Parrish.
Spanish sophomore from Nashville. Two time Gatorade player of the year in that state. Blue doesn't even challenge Paul for the ball. And that falls on. Possible opportunity. Still Paul. He goes down. And Rafford doesn't even attain it. Callum Johnson, the young man that's played almost 90, I mean, three, 91 college games. Three years at Boston College. Had redshirt a year, transferred here to Clemson, played two years. Been an impactful player here for the Tigers. Parrish on it again. Goes down, no call. Off point. We talk, we talk about Reed and why he's been so important, though, but they're playing without, as you said already in this broadcast, two of their key strikers, one being James Brighton, the senior that's his career may be over. He had an ACL injury. He had multiple surgeries after that. And before the game, he, he walks around with a sledgehammer. Now, the, 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 the etymology of this is in 2014 and 15. 15 is the year where they got to the College Cup final again. They had this part of their strength and conditioning program. It was to symbolize being the hammer, not the nail in every game they approach. Well, they brought it back out this year with the intention of taking it all the way to this place, hoisting the trophy, and then retiring that sledgehammer that he wields around quite easily now because he's jacked. It's huge. <laughs> he's, he's getting in quite a bit of work. But that young man has been, we asked him how hard is it for, he, this guy scored the game-winning goal when they beat, when they won the uh, 2020 ACC championship game in that tournament. He's, he's made big goals, he's made big plays throughout his career. How hard is it to be a leader when you can't be on the field? It's easy. I love my brothers. It's the tightest family I've ever been a part of. It is really simple to go out there and lead these guys from the sideline. Personally, knowing that I made him a play again, but I have a role here and I love playing. We can talk goals, we can talk tactics, what the trends are, but yeah. there's something to be said about the character within this Clemson Tigers squad, and you can't teach that. And whether you've lost a captain, a striker, multiple within this system, defenders have gone down. We alluded to that in the open. It's the next man up type thing and the belief that no matter what, they're going to find a way to get through it because it hasn't always been pretty. Mm -mm. Their performances have not been great throughout this run, and yet still, we're right here. Right here. They, they persevered through it. Now, obviously, having no Brighton, he's been out since the third game of the season, but also losing Mohamed Say uh, about seven weeks ago. Say is going to be available. He played 40 minutes in the semifinal game, but he's he's a shell of himself. The junior from, from Spain is an outstanding physical specimen, but he got great feet, too. But he really can't give you what he once did. So they've been adjusting and changing and doing it successfully. They've been on those teams, the all-star teams that everybody looks at go, they're going to win every single game. Mm -hmm. Never lived up to the expectations. It was the teams that I was on where we had the, the highlight players, if you will, but so many role players, everybody that was just kind of willing to do the dirty roles, right? And everybody knew their role. And even when you didn't know your role, you are willing to step into it. And that's what you get with this Clemson squad right now. The belief that no matter what's going right, what's going wrong, we're going to find a way to win. And there's Say on the, on the bench, as you said, he played in that game Friday night. Big, bulky knee brace. He's 16 goals, Brighton's 12 goals, 28 goals that aren't really in the lineup. And that's really the turning point of this offense this season when he went down in that Syracuse game. Right? It's not the loss. It's not the way that they played. It was him as an individual. And how are we going to play moving forward? They no longer had the number nine option. Isaiah Reed can cut from the outside, but with Brighton gone, and I would say out, you had to find a way to be better is the simple word. You had to be better because you had so many midfielders. And really talented, okay, you can put the ball on the deck, but what are you going to be able to do? And they would get about 80% of the way up the field and have nothing to show for it. Now all of a sudden, you set your line. You notice most of the time when they do get it, it's 15, 20 yards inside the center circle, and then they've got the whole field to play with. They're not really deep at all. Plus, Rienzi gets out of some trouble, finds Burks. Reverse pass does not connect. Plus, Rienzi on it again. Jamie Clark said, if we're going to win this game, we need Rienzi to be doing more things in the final third, getting further up the pitch. Well, there he is in this time. Switch out to Scardina. That doesn't cheer too much. Just over eight minutes to play here for Cary, North Carolina, alongside Devin Kerr. I'm Dallin Cuff. 2 0. Clemson over Washington in the College Cup final. Jamie Clark's team never has been here before. This Washington program has never been to a College Cup, never been to a final. The program, the athletic program, actually has never won a men's national title. The football and men's rowing titles they have are not NCAA titles. So technically, if number one of NCAA championship, trying to accomplish 
history here today in multiple ways. But find themselves down 2 0 through two Isaiah Reed goals, one in the first minute of the match, the second in the 15th minute of the match. That said, against Georgetown, when it was 0 0, Washington did score two goals in three minutes and 11 seconds. I mean, this team also, they're top 15 in the nation in goals scored per game. They're able to have a quick strike offense. Played out, Marks comes and claims offside. Offside indicated he gives Washington. And then offside, we'll tell you about Tuesday night. Just one college basketball game on ESPN. Should be a good one. Jaden Shackelford leads the balanced attack for number nine Alabama, who coming off a huge and slightly controversial win late last night against a ranked Houston team, a very good Houston team. They'll take on Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers, who are struggling a bit right now. Our coverage starts 9 Eastern. 8 Central. And like everything else, it's available on the ESPN app. One out, one tap. Elton Chiafumba, a freshman, lays it up to Parrish. Parrish lays it off of McNeil. Should have hit that. Definitely should have hit that one. Some of the cloudy decision making though when you have so many numbers forward. McNeil driven. Whoa. Pinballs off Sailor out for a corner. You got that confidence down that ticky tacka style football that Clemson's showing you right now. I feel like there's always going to be a player over that shoulder, and although there was one that you could have played down into the channel, and they slowly got it out here. So much space at the top of the 18. Don't be afraid to go it alone. Here comes a corner. Dylan Sullivan checked in. Six and orange came in for Callum Johnson at the last dead as well. Then in college soccer, you can sub out in the first half, come back in the second. Harris should take the corner. And swinger. Oscar Ogren gets his head to it. Tommy Diop, the center back partner, is going to be able to chase it down. Fumba. Sullivan steps and misses. This could be a transition opportunity for the Huskies. Good recovery by Sealer. Is that a good recovery or the poor, the poor execution it's by the Huskies? It's a poor decision. Coming up through by Chris Myers because he's got Lucas Meeks down on the left channel. Just give it to him. That's some of the stuff that I talk about when you chase so much, Dylan. Your judgment gets clouded. You don't make the right decisions. Even though he just came on as a substitute, trying to get acclimated to this environment, slow to react, and it's not a physical thing. He had plenty of room to run into. Just took the more difficult route. Myers, a freshman. Did not play in that semifinal game. In there now, chasing this ball down. Seven and white. Came in for Scardina. Ball to Paul. Burks. Soto on it. Not seen much of the ball. All league midfielder. 14 and white. into space. Myers. Myers might give it a ride. Pulls. Better though. Much better from the Huskies. And even when they get stuck in one little area, they're willing to play out of it. That's what we've seen all season long and finally making its way onto the field here. Chris Myers, good recovery. Because about 90 seconds ago, had the ball, the opportunity to stick it down on the left side, did not. Plays it into traffic. Gets it back, goes it alone. The willingness to have that confidence sometimes for a young man in his first season, you need that. Like you need the consistency of the senior players who have been through and seen stuff like this before. But the naivety you'll get of some of the youngsters can benefit you too. All headed down. Camilo Comey, number 11 in orange, challenging Burks for the ball. 
Just checked in a freshman from Rosario, Argentina. A town made famous by one Lionel Messi. Chris Myers on it now. Sensio wins that battle easy. Looking for the feet of Comey, gets him. Comey battling with Costa Rienzi. Comey also played for a club that has uh, quite a bit of history. The Nato Cesarini Club in Argentina, where Santiago Solari, Javier Maxereno, Martin Di Michelis all came from. These guys were all obviously guys who played at the World Cup level, played in that number and played in that final. Solari, a little bit older, but was coaching Real Madrid and others. Very accomplished program he came from. Robin skips by Comey. Under two to play. Works trying to get in line. Floats it out. Well, that was the flex back. Corner. Come up at half from Cary, North Carolina. We'll get you Isaiah Reed's goals and break down how and why that happened. It is still Jimmy V week. We're just about 30 minutes from Raleigh, North Carolina, where he became and may help make NC State famous in the V Foundation. Such an impactful foundation in his name. We'll talk about that as well. And some of the images of the 2021 College Cup. Ball. Might have gone off Robin's arm. Clemson players were asking for it. Ostrom. Looking for his tenth assist on the campaign. Burks all over him. And he actually went up flagging up for offside. Down is on. Brooks is running out of room. It's going to be 2 0 at the break. Not good news for the Huskies. When scoring first, Mike Noonan's teams are 119, 8 and 8 in his 12 years at Clemson. And when school leading in half, they're 82. Five and four. Your thoughts on the first 45, Devin? Clemson Tigers were awesome for about 25, 30 minutes. And they get their two goals, even if it's a mistake off Sam Fowler. But remember this, as well as they've played at the beginning of this game, they did the same against Kentucky. That slacked off in the second half. Five minutes to go. They gave up a goal that almost cost them. There's more talent on this Washington team. They are more than capable, although having never dealt with them before, of coming back in this game, playing better in the second half. That's going to be the conversation with Noonan and his boys at halftime. Well, let's talk to Mike Noonan right now. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're up 2-0 at the break. You told us before the game that it wasn't just about winning. You wanted to have a good performance. How do you feel about the performance in the first 45? Well, I think about 25, 30 minutes of it was outstanding. And then uh, we kind of lost our way in the midfield defensively and <coughs> lost possession of the ball. But for about 25, 30 minutes, we were outstanding. Coach, two outside midfielders for the Huskies. As the game go has gone on and they've made changes, started to create a little bit more width, your guys have had to respond to that. What's the conversation with your exterior mids and how they track defensively in the second half? Well, it's just got to be more organized a little bit. We've got to turn to the inside uh, and not allow the, the channel play because it's not just the outside mids. It's the forward running in behind them. Mike, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Tigers are up 2-0 on the Huskies right now looking for their third College Cup title in program history. Will they close the deal? We'll find out shortly. We come back though, we'll show you some highlights. How did we get to this point in the College Cup? Isaiah Reed, man. Keep balling. We'll be back in a minute. Second half, and Tigers fans, young and old, are loving it right now. They're up 2 0 over the Huskies with the College Cup on the line. And before we chat with Jamie Clark, the coach for the Huskies is going to try to find a way to battle back. I want to touch again on the his tutelage and his father, Bobby Clark, and the coaching tree 
he has created here. Bobby Clark, the coach of Notre Dame prior to that, Stanford and Dartmouth. Chad Riley was his pupil at ND. He went on to hang a 2013 banner, Bobby did. Brian Weiss, the coach at Georgetown, played for him at Notre Dame. His son Jamie played for him at Stanford. Then he comes to Notre Dame and builds that program into what it is today. And Chad Riley brought it all the way to the College Cup semifinal where they fell in the last game to Clemson. And Jamie's had a phenomenal career, a great job coaching this Huskies team. Also was an outstanding player at All-American for his father at Stanford. You take a look at Washington's scored multiple second half goals in four of the last five games, as we mentioned earlier in halftime, including the game Friday night against Georgetown, which put them in this situation. So these guys are more than capable of coming back and making this a game down to the wire. And Jamie Clark, the coach of the Huskies, is on with us. Jamie, thank you so much for your time. For sure. Down 2 nil. What was your message to the boys of the half? Got to bring our umbrellas. Story of a boy who uh, <laughs> drought struck in town, man. They came to, everyone came to hopefully pray for a, uh, a little bit of rain. My dad told me this story. Only one boy brought her umbrellas. These guys are going to bring their umbrellas in the second half. And I uh, got no doubt it's going to be a fit in the second half if we do that. Coach started to showcase it a little bit on the offensive end as the half went on. Guys like Chris Myers. What about those youngsters? Do they get the opportunity to continue forth? You go back to the starting 11. Uh, we, 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 put, we just flip Meek and uh, Scar. Uh, we want Meek running at this left back. We think he can cause him problems. Uh, we're going to play with one midfielder a little bit higher, see if that can unbalance him a little bit. And, you know, hey, we were up 2 nothing in the 80th minute, and God, it got hairy on Friday. So if we get one back, uh, it'll be a fun game. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate your time. For sure. He is right. It got tight that last 10 minutes against Georgetown. They actually had a shot with the last seconds waning on the clock to tie that game. But the Huskies held on, and that's why we are here. 2-0 at the break, though. Clemson is up. College Cup on the line in the second 45. Daniel Radford blows his whistle, and here we go from Cary, North Carolina. History will be made by one of these two teams at the end of today's match. This Huskies team, their program has never been to a College Cup. Clemson, this is their fourth final they played in. Lost the 2015 final to Stanford, won in 86 and in 87, 84, 87 and 84, excuse me. And a lot of these Tigers players have played a lot of these matches the last couple of years. They lost in the NCAA tournament as the number one seed last year to Marshall, the eventual winners, the second game, second round on penalties, they crapped out in the quarterfinals the year before that as the two overall seed, but now is the eighth seed. Here they are, up 2-0, with a chance to hoist the most coveted trophy in men's college soccer. So Devin, you heard Jamie Clark talking about how they're going to switch to Lucas Meek and Scardina and play with one midfielder further up. How do you think that will affect that? How would Clemson react to that? The question is going to be which midfielder is it? Because when you look at Christian Soto or Koso Rienzi, they're normally flat against each other. They don't really ask one of them to take those regular steps as Zim Fowler continues to hear it from this crowd. If I had to put my thumb on one of them, it would be Kosa Rienzi because in the conversation with Jamie Clark, he talked about how well-rounded this young man is, both on and off the field, but his talents actually remind him a lot of one of his former players, Seattle Sounders and United States men's national team player, Christian Roldan. So in that reference, you're talking about a guy who's game-changing. He's a difference maker in the midfield. So as he takes those steps up, can he bridge it to the final third? I do like that matchup on the far side with Meek. And in, this, yeah, in the, in the pregame talk, he said, you know, we're not going to change anything. We haven't over the last eight or ten games. Why am I going to take Lucas Meek, who's arguably our most dangerous offensive weapon right now, and put him in the 11? No, I'll bring him 20, 25 minutes on, or on after the game starts, and let him run at him. And he's going to do that. He's just flip-flopping sides. Watch a lot more cut-ins, though, too, because he's capable with both feet, Lucas Meek. 33 white is now on the far side, from the far side of the field. And you see the trophy they're playing for. Clemson looking to hoist it for the third time put. A third star on the crest of these jerseys. These young men have been dying to do it. They're only 42 minutes and 22 seconds away from accomplishing that goal. The Huskies, though, have that same dream. We'll see if they can turn the tables here.
Last time Clemson won that trophy was 1987. Tom Consempo, stats guy, has some great information. The, the, lead, the best song of the year, the top song of the year, was George Michael. You gotta have faith. Yes. Which is very relevant if you're a Huskies fan right now. North Carolina adopted milk as the state beverage. And Platoon was the best picture. Oliver Stone's classic. It's a good year. I'm in for that year. 87, baby. What a year. It's the last time Clemson won the Men's Soccer National Championship. Milk is the state beverage. Fascinating. Who would have thunk it? A lot of healthy people here. Minus the tobacco industry running here for a long time, but it's a different story. Yeah. Let's see, Reed trying to check this down. He's on a brace. Can he get a hat trick and ice the game? Cuts inside. Reed just wide. He's going to want that one back. Took a chance here if you're Ryan Saylor. He tries to recover and get him behind. Fortunately, enough, he actually pulls out of it. He takes him down. He's in trouble. Gets a little, touches it, springs forward. Look at the recovery by the other center back. Bashir Rama just, it's that tiny little slow up that has to come to the weaker foot of Isaiah Reed. Good coverage by Sam Fowler as well. Isaiah Reed on a brace right now. His goals are the difference. Goal in the first and 15th minute of the match. Almost scored a hat track. Patrick. Record keeping is it wasn't always perfect for the NCAA over the last you know, 60, 70 years. So we're not sure if there's been a hat trick in a final yet. Reed's going to go down in history with two goals. He would really go down in history with three, but hold on a second. Costa Rienzi coming forward. Meek doesn't get good purchase on it. Tevis tries to take it out of the air. Tevis has two hat tricks in the NCAA tournament alone. That's never happened before. Meek clips it in. There's Tevis just a little bit too tall. And Malou puts it out for a corner. Second in the match, and again, these Huskies, 18 of 19 goals. I mean, 18 last 19 games, they've scored a goal on a set piece. You see, they've been effective off corners. Ostrom to take it, nine assists on the campaign. In swinging ball to the back post, to the arms of Marks. Soto on it. Slips it through to Tevez. 1v1 with Diop. Tevez looking for help. Thinks he gets back to Ostrom. Ostrom loves to get to that left foot. Gets there. Whoa! What an opportunity for Paul. Got his body a foot around Oscar Agra and got an attempt up. It's a mistake by Callum Johnson. You've got to be better than this. And as good as Charlie Ostrom is at getting this ball out in front, you know 99% of the time it's going to be on the left foot. Just cut down into the corner, whipped it back across. Just trying to get a tiny touch if you can to Elijah Paul. So far for Jamie Clark and his boys, just a couple minutes in. We're doing exactly what he told us. Got a higher midfielder in Costa Rienzi. Elijah Paul, Dylan Tevez doing a good job of creating depth within those two striker spots. That's the one thing that I mentioned to you. Felt like it was a detriment for this offense at times. Can also be benefit, though, is Miglietti and Tevez, they play shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. And usually because they have the ability to get combination play off two of the outside midfielders. But leaving them further to the outside, you open up more space in the middle, and you got to find a way to play through someone much better from the two strikers here in the second half. Well done by... Luis Felipe Fernandez Salvador, known as Pipe. Another foot race between Reed and Saylor. Saylor wins this battle. Matt Herman Trophy semifinalist, Ryan Saylor, center back. The sun's starting to be a little bit of a factor with those balls lobbed over the top as guys are looking back towards. Washington goal, but here's Tevez going away from it. Charging in the middle. He's got some space. He can score from there. Ooh. I won. So we talked about 87 championship Clemson woman. Also won that one in 1984 as well. 84 defeating Indiana. 
2-1 in Seattle, Washington to claim their first championship, get the first star on the crest. And they added a second one just three years later, knocking off San Diego State 2-0. They actually played in the 1979 final as well. They lost in that final, though. Two championships, look to make it three. They lost in the 15 final. They're trying to make amends for that. Mike Newton, first time he would ever hoist the trophy. Another start of that crest. They've got two there already. One of my coaches coming up played for them, Eric Eichmann. United States men's national mm -hmm. team. It's always funny sometimes when you get these historic numbers and kind of wonder oh, who played for that one. I just had to double check just to make sure I was actually <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure Ike played for them. It's a great program with so many outstanding players in the last 20, 30, 40 years. Luciano Wayu, a number of other national team players. You mentioned early on in the game. You know, what is it like to chase this much and give up a mistake? Tevez gets in line, goes out for another corner. Again, they're dangerous in those. Preseason, my first collegiate year, we went up to Clemson. The relationship my coach Sean Murphy at that point in time for Stetson University. He was an assistant here back in the late 90s, part of those programs, and brought us up. And I'd never chased like that before. <laughs> it was miserable in general because it's preseason, but they were just left and right and everything. <laughs> okay, they're, they're a little bit better than us. Looking to play it in. Looking to back post Burks, but Marks gets a piece with Burks. Marks is asking for a foul. None is given by Daniel Radford. Costa Rienzi. Able to, yeah, able to control it nicely. Looks to the feet of Meek. And Meek has just all come back from offside position. I think the hip's doing just fine if you're George Marks. No harm, no foul there on the backside. He wanted a call from the referee. Felt like he needed to be protected a bit more inside his six-yard box. And more importantly, the injury side of things, we saw Justin Malou go down in the first game. George Marks did as well. Now it's Tony Diop being added to that list. Diop, sophomore from Senegal, second team All-ACC performer, All-ACC freshman team last year. He's not moving either. Yeah, it's not definitely not what you want to see. Now they do have a very solid backup in Ben Erickson's sophomore was a two-time Gatorade player of the year in South Carolina that could come into this match who's played in big games before in ACC tournament games and NCAA tournament games let's take a look and then you get the deck He's in the middle of your screen you see number five orange That he's stretching. Usually it's a player that feels like they felt a little muscle go, but how about Ben Erkins? He did well for himself earlier this season. How many DF got red carded? One of the NCC conference games. Duke game. The two yellows. He gave up two penalties. He actually gave up the penalty Friday night, too. Took down Matt Rue in the box. Tough situation for him, but took down Rue in the box, and which gave them the opportunity. Notre Dame to capitalize, and they did. Jack Lynn from the spot, but Fiop did make amends, played well the rest of the game, and he hit one of the penalties, ultimately, which gave them the 5 3 win in Penns. What's interesting is on the sideline and down in the corner, no one's warming up. Yeah. So, whether that communication hasn't made it to the sideline yet as Noonan comes off to have a quick word with his center back, or I think he's going to be able to have a go, and there he is finally. Now oh, he's up and moving. He can get the memo. And there is Erkins. Mentioned two time Gatorade player of the year in South Carolina. Still has his penny on though. And just if you're tuning into college soccer, you can sub out in the second half and come back in. So the day would not be done for Dion if he's forced to go off from Montverde Academy. An absolute pipeline of players from Montverde here to Clemson, given their coaching relationships with Mike Noonan. Justin Malou, also a Montverde guy, has his Usman Sila on this team. Oh, we got a break. Let's tell you. Of the coverage of the NCAA championships continues Wednesday or Thursday, excuse me, women's volleyball championship semifinal action December 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA women's volleyball championship, log on NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And DF comes right back on. A little hitch in his giddy up, though. And a grimace.
flick it on to Tevez. Osamanzi powering forward. Go get it, son. And there's that glimpse that Jimmy Clark's talking about, right? Another player down for Clemson. McNeil took that ball hard to the to the midsection, it looked like, and he is still down, bent over in the middle of the field. Johnson tries to play him, and actually try to play it out. And the boos are raining down, but in college soccer, A, this isn't time wasting. You took a shot. Secondly, the clock stopped. So. <laughs> you always love that, right, from I mean, the fans? The peanut gallery? Yeah. Ooh. Quite Dude's hurt. What are you booing for? <laughs> the clock literally is not moving. That little explosion from Costa Rienzi, though. It's not about five minutes mm -hmm. in, and a bit quieter. Not the same quality of level that we saw from the Tigers in the first half. The other side of that is it's a 2-0 lead. They're not going to chase the game as much, nor do they need to. Be real careful what you wish for, though. Talked about the set-piece goals for the Huskies. In the 21 matches. Scored at least two goals in 18 of them. 12 times, though, they've come in the second half, including four out of the last five. So this team, although historically over the course of the season, didn't start as a second-half team, they close really well. Just normally used to being out in front. Gomez tries forward, finds Pepe. He's got some numbers in the box. And the cross is not what he wanted to go. Fowler, good distribution out to the feet of Tevez. Good step by Diop. And they call Fowler. Hmm. The argument's going to be the arm over the, mm -hmm. the neck, I guess you would call that area. Call a horse collar tackle. That's hard as a player, too, when you feel like you've done everything right. And to be fair, most of the rest of it was really well done. Mm -hmm. Did the player have good contact? And the arm itself, it wasn't enough to really push him down. It's just the presence that it's there, and it's right in front of the referee. He's feeling it, though, here in the second half. Costa Renzi, much more active. You see the playmaking ability. Yeah. He's popping left and right. I was about to say the same thing. Because we even, even received that ball. It kind of just skipped over Pipe and just feels confident. Play Soto on the ball. Watch his first touch, too. His first touch is always head up in front of him and trying to be more forward thinking. Nice ball to Tevez. He'll cut it back. Diop is there to get rid of it. Soto tries to keep it in. 5-4, just tall enough to keep it on his head. Dinked forward. Lou read it, though. Oh, close to Rienzi again. Wow. This ball to Soto. He's got options. Cuts it back. Oh, he wanted offside. And oh, he scored. Oh, Christian Soto, the sophomore from Des Moines. Fourth offside of the match. Once again, Kalani Kosa Rienzi having himself a game here in the second half. Beautiful spin. And then as he goes, check the white jerseys, the numbers. It's close. On the top side, how many Diop? He's right there. Well, there could have been a hair off. Nice finish. It was a nice finish. And the crowd here can see our replays on the big board. Uh, I mean, we didn't have the best angle there, but Washington Huskies fans, even Soto was pointing to the board like, hey, we'll take a look. Don't want to say that was conclusive, my friend, that you were on side there. That was tough. Far side official Megan Mullen make the call. Far side AR. And we'll have a sub here coming in. And Muhammad Say will be joining the fray. As we mentioned him before, the sophomore, or junior, excuse me, from Spain. And Daniel Radford has a word with Jamie Clark. Soon about the offside call. Tevez working on the sideline, and he wandered offside. Now, these two do have history. Radford was the fourth official Friday night in the semifinals. And Jamie Clark got carded late because he was riding Radford hard. Matt Thompson, the official, came over. This is eight seconds left to go in the game. As soon as the game ends, 
They have more work. Just, he's not done. He's moving on to the final, but he wants to make sure to rap for what's going on. Brian Weiss, Georgetown's coach, actually then just told him as he congratulated him, hey, you know that's your official on Sunday. You might want to get it. might want to be easy. When he made us aware that he was actually the official involved in the Clint Dempsey incident, if you will, yeah. when he was in Seattle, ripped up the card, threw it to the side. A lot of respect between the two of them, though. And yeah. he, he made it very clear that high-level official and Daniel Radford, and they just didn't agree on that night. Mm -hmm. I remember watching that 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 uh, Dempsey game live, and he ripped up the card. And I was just like, oh, man, that's, I mean, he got redded right away. And then he got, I think it was a six-game suspension. But it was just, I was like, I cannot believe I just saw that. Daniel Radford was on the receiving end. He just does what he wants. That's, that's <laughs> you score in 32, se you 32 seconds against Ghana. Yeah, you do what you want. If you're one of our greatest goal scorers, greatest players ever, you do what you want. Got a Washington player down. I believe it's Lucas Meek. Yeah, he might have made some contact in his face as he holds his face. Looks a little incidental. As Jamie Clark told us earlier, and you referenced, Meek is their most probably gifted offensive player. So you hope he's okay as they're checking his head. And you can't afford to lose him in this game either. He missed games from September 3rd to Halloween. With injury issues, he's Pac-12 All-Second Team. Scored the opening goal Friday night for them. Crafty with the ball. And a finisher. It's a tight-knit group, this Washington Husky squad. They do everything together. Talked about some of the guys cooking, fun that they have off the field, crafting their celebrations. He's one of them, the air guitar that's taken an identity of its own as the collegiate careers continued forth for Lucas Meek. Poker players. I would say they love poker. They love man. poker. Yeah, Big they're... time poker players. and Bunch of Doyle Brunsons. I should have asked if they watch Rounders. Should have really got into it. Who's, K who's KGB in the group? <laughs> Paid that man his money. Not Fowler. It's definitely not Fowler. Not Fowler. Think about the mind games that go on within something like that. The psyche that yeah. you have to have that's similar to games that are playing out in front of you right now. Start to mess with in your opposition. Lean one way, go the other. Mm -hmm. Show your hand. That's kind of what you got out of Charlie Rostrom, to my point, in that semifinal game where every single time he goes to the left, even in this game, down into the corner, mm -hmm. pinging across, and it's that one time that he cuts back in, puts it on the right foot, upper corner, goal. That's what they're looking for here in the second half. Seen a lot of it out of Costa Rienzi, six in Washington. His running mate, Soto, and a really good job defensively of really cutting out. A lot of the through balls into the likes of Quinn McNeil, Callum Johnson, Alvaro Gomez. Very quiet here. They still have not been able to break their own drought. We see Gio Miglietti just check back in the game for Meek. Eight on the ball right there. Zila trying to turn. Mohamed says first pass of the game is wayward as Tevis picks it off. Again, he's dealing with a knee injury. Wearing that big brace. It's Really, shell of himself. He is an impactful player in mine in orange. 16 goals in his career, but he's been in injury riddled throughout his career as well. So he's going to try to run this one down. Alvin heads it back, left it a little short. Fowler comes off, makes contact. The crowd giving him the business when he went to do it. in space. He's got white jerseys in front of him. Plays it in low. Scardino. Not sure if he left that intentionally. His look over his shoulder felt like he had another runner behind him. The problem is, is everybody else had gone to the near post. He and Elijah Paul making the exact same run here. Really like the job done by Amini Diop, to be fair. And Lucas Meek back on for Miglietti. Everything's just a bit off here in the final third for Washington today. You know, it's the lack of run, the delayed run, the wrong ball. To be fair, a lot of those balls were 20 minutes into the game. They've gotten better here in the second half. You know, Radford stops the game for a second.
McNeil. Back to McNeil. Sila. Nice flip by McNeil. Asensio. Acres of space. He's got runners. Tries to play the cutback to Pipe. And flag stays down. Asensio was onside. He came back to him. Pipe. Good footwork. Driven in low. Out by Saylor. Out for Sela. Heavy touch. Bad turn. Costa Rienzi on it. George Mark started to come off his line, but he realized Oscar Ogren's going to win the race. change in midfield by the Tigers as well, recognizing they haven't been able to play through the center of the park. Sela coming back in, Pipe as well, and they've basically gone to a 4-3-3-2-1. Excuse me, the three are really flat. And then 15, 20 seconds later, they spin off. Quinn McNeil comes higher, gets down into the corner, ball into the channel. He's so good at showing you different looks and really making you challenge the mindset of where you think the next ball is going to go. All down by Burks. One of them a free kick in a dangerous spot. Absolutely. It's a smart decision. Soto. Looks it by a couple defenders. Diop eventually steps up. See the good spin off of Ostrom. Pass left short, though. That's the other thing, too, is when you don't knock that ball in and bring the center backs up, that's likely to be countered. Which is the the best way Washington scores. Give it a ride. Looks like Robert almost got a piece of that as well. Right? But Radford says no. It'll be a gold pick. Couple subs coming in. We're here at Cary, North Carolina. College Cup Final 2 0. Clemson is up alongside Devin Kerr. I'm Dallin Cuff. Two goals in the first 15 minutes of the match. Isaiah Reed in the first 30 seconds scored on a Sam Fowler mistake. The goalkeeper for the Huskies there swung and a miss. Allowed an open net. Reed capitalized on that. Then Reed had a beautiful header in the 15th minute. Put him up 2 0. That's where we find ourselves now. It's the first ever appearance in the College Cup and the final for the Huskies. The fourth final appearance for the Tigers, and they've won two titles previously, 84-87, looking to climb to the top of the mountain yet again here, and they are almost there with just 24 minutes remaining in this College Cup final. Devin, what needs to happen for the, hold that thought, Tim Strobeck may have a chance here, just subbed on, what a tackle by Robin! The senior transfer from Bowling Green comes up huge! Lou brings it down on his chest. What an entry back into the game for Tim Strobeck almost, the freshman from Sweden. Had a great chance, but Robin, the Frenchman, came up big in the back line. Some fans and the bench is upset over there. They're upset about it. It's a foul. Yeah. He's playing on the ground right in front of him. But how about the ball back across here and the recovery by Shea Robert as Mike Noonan is absolutely furious with the decision here by Daniel Radford. That didn't look like there was contact. When he went to ground, he just continued to play fourth. Right in front of the benches. You can make your argument there, possibly. But if he lets him play, and he just let him play on the other side. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of tit for tat between the two. And then Soto just trying to win the ball, play quick. Mike Noonan, 12th year at the helm here at the Tigers. They won the 2020 ACC tournament. Last year, as we mentioned, the number one overall seed knocked out by Marshall in the second round. In the round of 30, the round of 16. On penalties, Marshall went on to win the national championship. 
Here's this tackle that was by Robin that came over and really keep this game alive. It's a beautiful tackle. I'll give him that. And he gets ball. Yeah. The argument, I've been thrown out of the game for that tackle. Made contact barely. <laughs> but because you come from such a negative position, you get in trouble. In this day and age, they're so strict coming from behind. But in this type of game, that's really difficult for a referee to blow that. I'm glad, I'm glad he didn't because he may have put this game to bed, and I'm not sure that tackle deserved to do that. How many times have we seen here in the second half, though, the fact that the ball comes up over the top? Ryan Saylor has had problems with the speed. Yeah. And a lot of times, the Shio Robin has been Johnny on the spot, that little slide over. Not easy by the center back. He's got a lot of coverage in front of him with the way that Mohamed Say is taking up shape on that back line. Johnson crowds out Ostrom. Let's go back to your point, by the way, right at the tackle. What needs to happen? The intensity's got to come up. Mm -hmm. The belief that, yeah, you can get this done. That you can be the second half team that goes and hunts and grabs two more goals who basically do it every single game this season 18 out of 21 at least two goals blanked here tonight in this second half the ideas have been better but the five offsides has been a problem and we barely saw any of that within the two semifinal matches and historically that's not something there you've got to go all the way back to 2017 the stanford team the five nothing shellacking against akron in the semifinals so just Slow your thought process down and be better come final third. So this plays it in. And nobody there. Again, this team is dangerous on free kicks. 18 of the last 19 matches they've scored in a free kick, but not going to have one there. Or 18 goals from free kicks in the last 19 matches, I should say. George Marks in no rush. Beautiful day here at Wake Med Soccer Park here in Salem Stadium, Cary, North Carolina. Again, the host of the College Cup as it's been the last three years. Men and women will be here next year like it was last year, which was an awesome event, a great experience. Run that back. Congratulations to Florida State women who won last week, last week in Santa Clara. Mark Corian's crew have now won three national championships in the last eight years. Strobeck pops it, I mean, Pipe pops it out to Say. Say turns it over. Ball crowded out by Chifomba. Tom Johnson head up. Justin Malou, the 27th overall pick, number four in order to the Columbus crew last spring. He will be part of Columbus's setup going forward, but Elijah Paul is down on the knee right now. In his face. Actually, thought in the run of play, this is a foul. Not just the hand of the eye where he gets poked, but the actual contact that occurred before it. Down in that pocket. This is a combination, by the way, that we haven't seen regularly for the Huskies in 2021. Migliati and Elijah Paul, and as he comes back in, the arms out. Continue there. Hands up over the top. No whistle blown. Only Christmas present on the backside. Maybe a lump of coal, really. Elton Chifumba in the action there, the freshman from Ohio, part of the Columbus Crew Academy. Tiger mixed up there, Paul. And the goal scorer is back. Isaiah Reed comes back in for Mohamed Say. Take a look at his two goals. Again, that first minute goal. 27 seconds into the match on a mistake from Sam Fowler. And then the 15th minute, beautiful header. Tuesday night, just one college basketball game on ESPN. It should be a great one. Jaden Shackelford leads the 
talented Alabama team, number nine in the country, coming off a big win, a controversial win a little bit against Houston late last night. They're taking on Memphis Tigers and Penny Hardaway's crew, which is uber talented. Imani Bates may be you know, a top five pick, not in this draft, but next year's draft. He's not even eligible for this year's draft, but they got to get it together. They've lost four straight. Coverage starts nine Eastern, eight Central. Like everything else, it's available on ESPN, the app. One app, one tap. Think about this as well, by the way. I just referenced the combination between Migliati and Elijah Paul. The lack of frequency between the two. How about Tevez out on the right wing? Yeah. You've taken one of your most, if not the most dangerous player in your arsenal, pushed him further away from goal. And they haven't had a lot of opportunities here. What do you think the thinking is to do in that? Just get him more attacking players? They're trying to play through him. And, and they want him to run at left back with Charlie Asensio. And the way that the rotation comes, there is a lot of space. This is really the first time they've been able to isolate him. Tevez ball in. It's the deck. All still there. And we dinked off Paul's arm. The way that the field has compressed, too, if you notice, a lot of the movements coming from Washington, they're having to fight against multiple players in front of them. So with Tevez out there, the ball at his feet, he's much more comfortable in those scenarios as opposed to a Scardina or a Lucas Meek. That's not knocking them, but those guys want the ball in front to run into it. They want him to run at it, and there's a difference within that. So as Tevez comes back to the inside, he can look to combine with the two strikers. He can play off of an, a running Soto and what we've seen, probably the best player on the field all day long, Costa Rienzi. Yeah. So those guys, as they become more active, you need someone who's comfortable with the ball at their feet and in traffic, and that's why they move Tevez to the right side. There's the aforementioned Costa Rienzi, pops it out to Meek. Meek striding forward. Still on it. And that went off of Malou, so he will leave it for a corner. Their fourth of the match. Just over 16 minutes to go. The big center back striding forward. Ryland Saylor, number four. Coming up, he's got six goals in the campaign. Second on this Huskies team, all from set pieces. Shield Robin, the big center back, comes up. They have size, and they are effective again from free kicks. Tevez, in swing. Marks claims. Could try to outlet it and get it going. There's a 3v3. He does play it. It falls. A good, well covered by Ostrom. Ostrom upended. And the call is made by Radford. And the extracurriculars. And foul the match for the Tigers. It's a good hip check, though. Make, <laughs> that's, make, one, that's one way to put it. Making <laughs> Ulf Samuelson proud for the, any any old Penguins fans out there. Strobeck running it down with Costa Rienzi. Oh, he put the brakes on him. Strobeck did fly by, but it was tight. Migliati brings it down. And here comes a long throw. Ostrom coming over. And they want to do everything they can to get that ball in the box, these big bodies. Careful, there's no one at the top of the 18 for this second ball in the outlet. Might be able to pop it back into the mixer. He's gonna do it. Deflected in though. Dinks through. And Arx is able to get on the ball. Fifteen minutes to go. They can't even test marks at all. This team's about numbers and trying to find a way to tickle the nylon pound as many shots as possible onto frame 56 shots their first three tournament games and route to this college cup performance they've had 10 mm -hmm. since they've stepped into carry for today is it just the competition going up or have they not been as good both mm -hmm. it's a combination of poor decision making low levels in certain areas and i made the argument in the first half of that semifinal they were brilliant defensively mm -hmm. Too brilliant. They sat back too much. Yeah. 
you, you concede that much possession, you're not going to have anything to show for it on the other side. Jamie Clark said exactly that. We sat back too much. We respected it too much, and we had to chase. You saw that in the opening 25, 30 minutes. And to Noonan's point, we've been, we were great, excuse me, for the first 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. The second that they backed off, Washington starts to punch back into the game. Yep. Start of the second half, same thing. Washington comes out with a fury, couple of chances. They backed off again. Last two or three minutes, the intensity level has come up. But with 13 minutes to go, there's got to be that belief that we keep hearing within this squad that we can win, that we can do no harm, and we will always be on the better side of this argument. Haven't really seen that in full combination play with all these guys together so far yet today. Luis Bonsilla just checked back in. And this team, talking about the Huskies have struggled with how the game's gone back and forth. One thing we do know is Clemson, in these situations where they're leading, under Mike Duda, they've closed out wins. Up at halftime, 82, five and four. This year, they're 11-0-1 in the league at halftime, as they were today, up 2-0, with just over 12 minutes to play, and haven't been threatened much. Will that change? Well defended by Callum Johnson. Trying to find Strobeck on the outlet, can't. Ostrom, he is dangerous. Marks reading it through the sun. High points. McNeil. Touch was heavy. Burks won that battle. Referee's letting him play a bit more now. The game's opening up, and he's not having any of these half challenges. Oh, done by Auger. Ball was trying to spin him. No avail. Fowler's heard it all game, folks. If you weren't there, that was the feel off of, off of for Sam Fowler. Swung and missed and allowed the first goal 27 seconds in. Ostrom, low ball played. Yeah, clears. And down goes Callum Johnson, I think. He's on the deck. Ostrom's going to play the ball in. Just too tall for Paul. Washington is not obligated to play it out. And because it's not a head injury, they can allow play to continue as Daniel Radford has. She fumbled, pulled over Soto, no call. And that ball to Reed was just off, and South Fowler's able to play a little sweeper keeper. Johnson is still down. The redshirt senior from New York City, part of the New York Red Bulls Academy, played three years at Boston College, transferred here to Clemson, two seasons. This is his 89th college game. He's down. He was on the backside of a recruiting conversation that we had with Mike Noonan, asking him what it takes to come and play here, the intangibles. Mm -hmm. There's 10 boxes these guys got to check. They got to hit at least seven of them. And to get to that point, so where did you pull that from? We got a lot of that from Dabo Sweeney and the football team, actually. Mm -hmm. They talked to a bunch of the coaches around the, the college and what did they look for within their players? That's where the intangibles came from. And then I looked at him and I said, yeah, how about Callum Johnson? Because they said <laughs> they didn't accept transfers. They wanted guys over here the whole time. Thing, yeah. no well, transfers. we're not exactly yeah. like Dabo <laughs> and those guys. And he's one of them, though. But they were familiar with Callum Johnson and his time at the Red Bull Academy. New York native, they recruited him, weren't able to get his hands on him, had a quality career at Boston College, hit the transfer portal, pick him up right away. And this is a kid who... Over the course of this season, with the injuries that they've picked up, he has played in the nine. Outside on the wings. In the last four or five games, they've actually moved him to the interior in that flat three in the middle when they do employ it, paired alongside Alvaro Gomez and Quinn McNeil. There's Johnson as he walks off. See if he can continue. But the reason they're up 2-0, this is just seconds into the match. Long ball played by Oscar Ogren. Oh, Sam Fowler, I'm sorry, man. We we'll keep showing this, but Isaiah Reed capitalizes. Right back to work. Usman Sila, extremely dangerous. Great ball down into the corner. And how back? This ball all the way to the backside. No numbers coming off the back line to step into it. Ashiel Robin, Ryan Saylor have done really well for themselves. The tackle's in transition. But within the box, they've struggled. 
Isaiah Reed absolutely has not. Two goals in 15 minutes. Pretty much been on cruise control ever since. Junior from South Carolina. Rock Hill, South Carolina, part of the Charlotte Soccer Academy. Grew up in that. Had two huge goals that are going to go down in Clemson soccer lore. They can hold on for the next 10-30. Brandon Parrish came in the match for Johnson. Soto wins the header. Soto, quick feet. He might have got stepped on. You want them to play quicker, you're over here motioning. Ostrom's got to come outside faster. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see, especially with his vantage point, that that ball's going to come this way. There's no other outlet for it to come, and his late recognition condenses the field, and so it's much more difficult to get a ball up into the box. Uh-oh. That's dangerous toward the back post. And you saw Marks' feet start spinning the goalkeeper. It looked a little concerning, but it just goes out. It's the second bite of the apple, because as this comes back in, then he can come to a further position on the outside, and now you can see the whole field. When you're compressed to the inside, you don't know where the runners are going to come from. You don't challenge the defensive shape of the Clemson Tigers. That's the bread and brother of Charlie Olstrom. Move it to the outside, continues to whip balls into the box. This is what has should have been going on all game. Mm -hmm. Feet a throwback. Trying to cross over, he's able to almost get it done. Robin there again, he's been able to clean up some of the emergency situations. He's the one who was matched up against Reed, and he lost that foot race. That's not his fault. Mm -hmm. Those are just different numbers. You can't win some of those metrics. But outside of that, it's been great, especially in the second half. A lot of recovery runs being done by the right-sided center back and the back shoulder of Ryan Saylor to help him out. Burks plays the early ball, looking for Paul. Ball to Soto, he's waiting for Ostrom on the overlap. Well read by Parrish. Ostrom still on it though, 22 assists in his career. Just ushered off the ball by Malou. Thought he pulled Malou down, no call. Shifumba caught in possession at a bad time. He just pulls down Paul. And that's gonna be a card probably. There it is. Card is brandished. This is a young mistake on the back side of things for Chief Umba. Mentioned the game as it's opened up, the referee letting him play a bit more. There's one, thought that was a foul. Good job by Justin Malou. Knows he's going to the left foot, and as they try and play out, just gets caught up behind. Does a good job on the challenge coming from Lucas Meek, but as he rolls back over here, that's frustration by a young player. Let's it get the best of his decision-making process, and this is a gift to the Huskies outside the top of the 18. A lot of times they like to go with the left footer, but the angle that you have and how you employ it, which direction you go to, especially with the battle that George Marks is fighting. You see him hands up in the sun, very difficult shadows to sun for the goalkeeper. This could change the complexion of the game. 8-12 to go for Clemson to hold on for a championship, but if this has the deficit, it's going to be a nervy last few minutes. Tevez on it. Whips it back post. Too much. Home in semifinals, Dylan Tevez. Two hat tricks in the NCAA tournament. Back to back games. It has not Look made as much wall. impact here. What are they doing in this wall? You are asking for this to go direct. I'm shocked Tevez doesn't have a strike. He only goes with three. The goalkeeper can't see. And instead, you get caught. Am I going to loft it to the far post? Am I going to go direct? You do neither. Is that just a, 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 you're just too focused on doing maybe what you're told, not what you're seeing? Like, really, you, you see the hole there. He could have gone. You wonder what the conversation is between he and Ostrom, right? Yeah. Right foot, left foot. But the second that that wall breaks up, just give it to me. Yeah. Ping it right at him. You, in those scenarios, you have to try to hit someone. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how easy it is to get it around or through a wall like that. It's two-man wall at that point in time. Yeah. Pepe Fernandez check back in for Usman Sila. He cuts back, leaves it for Soto. 
Under seven. Huskies are in desperation time. Should anything change here? You need two goals in seven minutes. I'll stick to what they're great at. You might see. And I say might. Because of the way that this Clemson team can play out of the back so quick and how dangerous they are. Higher line from the outside right back in Kendall Burks. He's more than willing to attack on that right flank. Haven't done it a lot here today, but with just inside seven minutes to go, extra bodies, numbers, throw it in. Hope Lady Luck helps out a little bit. Ostrom looking for the long throw, looking for Sailor. Falls, Sailor's there. Lays it back for Ostrom. Into the mixer it goes. Falls, still loose. Popped up, Marks is there. And the ball crosses the line, but Daniel Radford is yellow carding Sailor for playing continuously. The whistle blew. Still going at Marks again. Sailor grabs the card. Shio Robin, his arm on the tail end of this thing, actually tries to punch it out. Watches it pops back up here. Marks can't see anything in the sun. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Almost impossible for the goalkeeper. And hand of God for Michelle Robin. You think you're Maradona? You see the red coming for Sailor. And back on the deck is Hamidi Diop. Had issues earlier. About 20 minutes ago, Diop was down 25 minutes ago. He is again. Sophomore from Senegal, second team all ACC. Montverde Academy product. Not Academy, Montverde. Prep school product. You know what really kind of tickled my mind coming in? And I asked Mike Newton about this. Your mind? Yeah, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Was if you look at the talent of this team compared to the teams in Clemson over the past couple of years, respectfully, you're probably picking one of those other teams, right? I mean, they did have Robbie Robinson, the first overall pick two years ago. Grayson Barber, Kamarni Smith. I mean, you can go through the amount of Just on and on and on. And I'm not knocking the players that are on the field, but when I asked Mike Newman, especially with the injuries that they picked up, are you surprised that you've had this much success? And he said, no, it's, it's just different. The group's different, right? With that said, James Brighton told us this is the best team I've been a part of. And James was on all those teams and was maybe as a player off the bench and a key guy off, off the bench for those teams. And he said, this is the best team. And it is a veteran senior led group. As Fowler comes off his line again. Whew. Told you, it's not always talent level. Yeah, it's, it's teams. It's not it's just the roles. best players oh, on the field. Soto. And Soto's cleared out. They're going to play on. Soto's going to roll around. Ryan Taylor's coming up, the center back. They're starting to push numbers forward. Soto is still on the deck. He's finally getting up. Ball played out. Now Daniel Radford's going to stop the clock to issue a card here to Brandon Parrish. Whether it's been Kalani Koso Rienzi on the inside or Christian Soto, the two midfielders from the Huskies have helped keep them in this game, both very active. Providing a lot of outlet balls. Nice little pirouette. Woo. Cheers. Parrish forgot something. Was this FIFA? That right stick, couple circles. A lot of guys don't have the confidence to make a move like that. In a game like this in general, yet alone down 2 0 with five minutes to go. Good on him. Long throw pending. Sailor coming for it. Ocean picks up the second ball. He wants to get on that left foot. So it was, oh yeah, unmarked at the top of the box. Pipe wins the foot race. And then Tevez, he's got, he could play it over to Strobeck. He's trying to stay on side. Outside of the boot ball that Soto read just well enough. And here we go the other way. Lucas Meek trying to win this foot race with Oscar Ogren. Junior from Sweden, as cool as you like, plays it out to touch. Matt Kerman, semifinalist, it's a National Player of the Year award. One of 15 semifinalists, first team all ACC. That center back has been so solid throughout his career. Now Ostrom here with four minutes to go. Throws it in. Ostrom, that's a good ball played in! Sigler was there but couldn't put it on frame. 
still in play. He painters gets it out. Kept in by Costa Rienzi. Good ball. Finds Meek. Getting back on that right foot. Sailor to play back across. Great attempt. Robin, the other center back, center back to center back, deflected out. I actually thought this came off Oscar Ogden. Watch this thing pop back up. Go to the center back. Over the left shoulder, drops it. Who does this hit? Hits Paul. 12 and 1. Does hit Elijah Paul. Great job by their captain, Audrey, by the way, coming back over because even the slightest bit of pressure throws that viewpoint off. Wow. Huskies almost made this a really wild last three minutes, but they're not done yet. Again, they scored two goals in three minutes and 11 seconds the other night against Georgetown, the semifinal, in a 2 1 win. Can they replicate it here? They're going to have to. Burks on it. Low ball driven in. Played out by Dia. Fifth corner of the match. Everyone's coming forward. Maybe Sam Fowler, the goalkeeper as well. He's looking for instructions from the sideline. They're wondering. Fowler keeps looking. Eventually they say no, stay there. Low ball. Flicked on. Falls for Tevez. Flipped on again. And Marks is there to get it. Whoa. It's certainly not the second half in overtime performance we saw by George Marks in that Notre Dame victory, but he's had to make a couple here here in the second half. Brandon Parrish to ice it. 1v1 with Fowler. Good recovery by Sailor. But this is going to tick, tick, tick. Clock is the biggest enemy. And the Clemson faithful made the drive from four and a half hours away. Starting to feel it. That third star on the crest. Coming to Columbia, South Carolina in just over 90 seconds if the boys can hold on. Play it short to Parrish. He's down. Sorry to Clemson, South Carolina. Those Gamecock fans probably hate that. Sorry. Daniel Radford saying, wind the clock. Do not stop it. is still running as the yellow card is about to be brandished for Lucas Meek. We're under a minute. A senior led team that Mike Noonan said I've done more listening than talking ever in my career. This is a player led group that had been through battles had been through a heartbreaking penalty kick losses in championship game in, in the NCAA tournament. Most of this group had lost to UVA, the ACC championship two years ago. Surviving injuries to their strikers, moving things around, changing guys up, persevering through all of that, through back-to-back -back penalty shootouts, one up at Oregon State, the number one overall seed on their field in Corvallis to get here to the College Cup, then beating an ACC foe in Notre Dame. And ten, 10 seconds away from glory. The Tigers have done it. The celebration begins. The first title since 1987. One of the Blue Blood programs is back atop of the heap of men's college soccer. Clemson Tiger fans are streaming onto the pitch. They're yelling, you can't be on it. The kids don't care. The fans don't care. They want to be part of history.
Huskies had an unbelievable season, getting past that quarterfinal roadblock for the first time to get to the final, first time in program history, but falling shy to this Tigers team that was just better through this 90 minutes. That's what happens sometimes down is sometimes your level's just off and you get outplayed. And this wasn't about one team being better than the other. Equally matched the two foes, but who could be better on the day? And Clemson Tigers answer that. And to be honest, they didn't in 30 minutes. 30 minutes of the first half, they were brilliant. They scored two goals in the opening 15. They're gifted one by Sam Fowler, a second one. Brilliant build-up play. Isaiah Reed grabs both goals. Turns out their top scorer is going to be one of their forwards. It's not going to be a <laughs> midfielder and Pepe.